Meth is cheap. You can get a quarter gram for around 30 bucks and Oklahoma is one of the biggest markets in the country. Anyone can make it. Cooks whip up batches in their basement with Sudafed, fuel, kitty litter, and the strike pads of matchbooks. It's one of the most addictive drugs, so I'll get dependent quick. I know it does some nasty shit to your body. I try not to think too much about that. I won't be on it that long anyway, just long enough to get sent away and cleaned up. I'm different from the average user. I have a plan. It's from the point of view of a 16-year-old boy. He's sick of being ordinary, sick of like fading into the background. He gets this crazy idea that he'll get addicted to crystal meth, sent to rehab, come back with like street credibility, like bad boy status, and win this girl. Laura Lee will be the most surprised of all. She'll hold my hand and stare at me with awe. She'll say, I had no idea. Are you okay? How was it? I'll tell her. There's a lot of bullshit that goes down in rehab, a lot of meetings and time-consuming crap to keep you from using. Oh, by the way, you see the uh, Lee Ronaldo, Sonic Youth? You showed it to him when you were drunk, baby. I did? Yeah. I don't remember any. Do you have everything? Yeah. Oh my God, Mike, where did you get these? Mike is the maintenance guy on our apartment. He's lived in the neighborhood for 25 years and he is like literally the dream maker. It's like whatever you want, he has it. Like, <laughs> he comes up with the craziest shit. Like he's like, Thomas, tell me, I got something for you. And he takes him in and there's like these 200 eight tracks. Wow. I'm gonna write a story about Mike one day. This area is so good, this area is great. There's so much drama going on at all times in this neighborhood, I love it. And some of the drama I make up, like I have whole theories about like, I think that the bar across the street is like some drug ring run by a hostage. I have this theory that there's a meth lab next door. There's like constant action. That's awesome. And here's my ass. That's me. Oh. That's the cover of the book. See, that's my back. And we're at the Chelsea where our friend Jefferson lives in the Bob Dylan room. That's actually where Dylan Thomas died. People think he died at the um, White Horse Tavern, which is um, a really famous writer bar. And actually, that's just like legend. He actually made it back here. And this is Jefferson. Made it back here. Yeah, it's talking about how Dylan Thomas back. died at, in your room. Yeah, well, almost. He went into a coma. Today, they're having the trailer awards for book trailers, and we're nominated for best big budget, big house trailer. And we're trying to make it into a movie. Um, so the director's coming from Miami, and the producers are, and they're trying to raise the funds for the movie. This is um, El Quixote, and it is where a lot of the beatniks hung out. Um, Burroughs and Kerouac, which is kind of fitting because that's in my book a lot, the beats. And also there's a picture in here of Sid Vicious in, face down in his suit. Many writers have gotten trashed here. Not me, because I'm a classy lady. <laughs> Damn! We are parked outside an old barn that has seen better days. A trailer is further down the field. Based on my research, the barn is expected. Meth cooks frequently inhabit the kind of homes you can be packed up and moved within the hour. Mobile homes, trailers, motel rooms, abandoned shacks. Trailers. Only this trailer is different. It looks like it's been here a while, like a home. It's big, probably a double wide. Lace curtains are on the window. A pine cone wreath twined with red ribbon is attached to the door. A tiny roped off garden is out front. Someone has stuck a bright pink plastic flamingo in the dirt by the stairs, and boxes of pink flowers are attached to the window. I got an email yesterday from my editor. She said, I'm like really elusively, like I'm sending you something in the mail. And I immediately like knew it was the final book because it's supposed to come out this month. And I was like, oh, what is it? What is it? It feels like the book. It's the book. It's gotta be. It's the book. I usually teach at universities as an adjunct. I've taught at like nine universities. It's really hard to get adjunct work in the summer. I'm born and raised in Oklahoma. Oklahoma is just a really unique place in that I'm genuinely the nicest people in the entire world. If you or your car was to get a flat tire, 
during what we call like rush minute instead of rush hour, literally, six people would stop within like five minutes. Be like, can we, hi, can I help you out? Are you okay? You know, I mean, that's just what they do. And then there's the part of Oklahoma you don't see as obviously, which is, you know, there's just all the stuff that we don't talk about. And one of them is, you know, the drugs, because it is a boring ass place. Like it is so boring. There's something about that that is great for a writer, you know, because you really have to live inside your head and make scenarios. And had I been raised in New York, it just wouldn't have been the same. I don't think. Ah, New York. Like right on there on that corner is where um, Timothy Leary had his drug experimentation center right there on the second floor. Because when you start reading all this beat literature, you find out all the like, and it was all in this neighborhood. And oh my God, this is my favorite book guy in the entire world. Uh, this is a first edition Jack Kerouac Dharma Bombs. This is not my favorite Jack Kerouac book, but that is the greatest Darwin, picture. Yeah. Because in my book, the kid, the kid I wrote about is obsessed with Kerouac. I went through this serious beatnik phase where all I could, do, all I would read was beat books. Because they were all about defy expectations, defy the rules in terms of drugs and sexuality and their writing. And so they were like very revolutionary. There was something really exciting about that when you're 19 and you're living in New York City. I was gonna show you that this apartment is where I lived when I was 19. It was the last door upstairs. I lost my virginity. These words these are broad, broad words. And these are what makes something not literary. A twisted mess of horror and all permanently etched in their pale faces. All right. I don't mind etched in their pale faces. In fact, I kind of like that. But the word hor horror and awe, that does nothing for me. In an alternate world where I am not a pussy, this would be where I step close to her, wrap my arm around her waist, pull her to my ripped chest and say, my voice sounding like Daniel Craig's James Bond, my hot non-vegan breath in her slightly stick out right ear. Little you know the subtle electric fire that for your sake is playing within me. God damn it. Maybe I should just sit with it here for a while. Jeez. Oh my God, that's so crazy. To Thomas Warmy, because you make me happy. I love you, Diley. To all my students, past and present, because you keep me going, inspire me, make me laugh, and remind me why I love stories. Because I can only hope I've taught you as much as you've taught me. So this is like fucking, I can't even read it. I don't even re remember like writing it, to tell you the truth. And I look at it and I'm like, who wrote that shit? Like that's some raw, like crazy shit. And the fact that all these people are gonna be like, seeing me, like really seeing me in that way is just kind of blows my mind and scares the shit out of me, honest to God. But it's, it's great, like that's what I want, right? That's why I, I do it. I, that was literally the day I left my ex-husband. And my friend who's a photographer, I kept saying, I need you to take a picture of my tattoo. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. And I'm like, and then he's like, as I'm going to the airport to go home to Philly to live on my parents' couch. He's like, okay, and that was the picture he took. So of course, that is the perfect angsty writer photo because I am so angsty. I hate the world. He fell through the sidewalk cracks. A vagina was a foreign country. A tongue was only for food. That kid's man mantra was duck and run. I don't know who the fuck wrote this. That is some disturbing as shit. I'm a sweet girl. Look at this man up and grow some balls, you fucking pussy. Well, obviously I'm deeply disturbed on some level. I'm pretty proud, I'm really proud, right? I should be, right? It's a big deal, right? Yeah, the book wrote itself very fast, but there were earlier drafts and there was a hell of a lot of research. So I was basically living in this meth world for two years. And that is a dark, dark place to go to. Um, so I would like to write about something like a, a candy. Just candy for my next book. It's just gonna be about like how they make candy and how people like candy and it makes little children happy.